You're listening to episode 5 of the Fearless English podcast. Welcome to the Fearless English podcast, where it's all about helping you confidently communicate with anyone without compromising who you are. Let's get started, fearless learner. Our next guest is a very good friend of mine who was born in Louisiana, America. He currently works in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and he is also a cultural ambassador with over 100,000 followers across his social media platforms. On top of all of that, Teacher Will also continues to work on helping students value their identity instead of thinking that there's something wrong with their accent to work on loving their accent, understanding that it's part of their identity and not conforming to um, the belief that there's something wrong with you if you have a certain accent. If you want to check out Will's work, all you have to do is type ask underscore teacher will that's ask underscore teacher will um, on all social media platforms and you'll be able to find him i've also provided links to all his social media platforms below this podcast in the show notes hello will thank you so much for joining me today well, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm super excited for today's conversation. Um, we're focusing on um, what is your hometown like? We'll get started with where you were born. So your hometown growing up. Can you describe it for me? Sure. Like? Uh, so very quickly, my hometown where I actually was born, I stayed there for probably a total of what, two years. So I was born in a town called Nacogdoches, which was in Louisiana. Most people are not familiar with that, or if they are familiar with that, if people know the movie or have seen the movie called uh, Steel Magnolias with Sally Field, Olympia Dukakis, Julia Roberts, then that's where I was born. Uh, so I, was, I have Southern roots, yet my mother and father met in the South, and yet they migrated because my father was from the North, even though they met in college. So my hometown, though I was born in Louisiana or Nacogdoches, I consider my hometown Marstown, New Jersey. And so if you ask me to compare Nacogdoches from Marstown, they are <laughs> completely apples and oranges different. <laughs> so I can talk about Marstown because those were the formative years of where I grew up. Well, uh, so um, before we talk about that, um, I mean, can you just paint a, a, like a quick picture of how what it was like to live there. Oh, in Marstown? Sure. No problem. Marstown, New Jersey. I, well, the good thing was I, I have a lot of fond memories of Marstown. I'll describe the city. Uh, it's, it is a city which is about 30 to 40 minutes northwest of New York City. So it is considered to be a suburb of New Jersey. Marstown, I think when I was growing up, probably had a population of 20,000 individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, the good thing about Marstown is, or is and was for me is, is that my father's side of the family lived there. So my grandmother lived there, my uncle lived there, my cousins lived there. So it was, you know, it's a town where everybody in my family, we lived like 10 minutes from each other. Marstown was a diversity in terms of races and ethnicities. Marstown, um, I remember Marstown in terms of having the train tracks, because if you wanted to go to New York City, uh, you would, you know, get on the train tracks. Marstown was also known for uh, something extremely important to me that happened in my family every Friday night. Uh, my mother decided not to cook because she cooked for myself and my siblings, and her off day was Friday, and so it was a tradition that Friday night, we had Chinese food, and there was a famous Chinese restaurant called August Moon. Uh, what I also remember about Marstown, which is interesting, I don't know if a lot of people realize this. However, Marstown in Marstown, New Jersey, actually, was the site and is the site of the George Washington Museum. Mm -hmm. And the George Washington House, or first president of the United States, was George Washington. If you go to Marstown, you can see his house, 
where he first lived and also had, and there's a museum there now. What else about Morristown do I remember and love? Well, Morristown, when I was a kid growing up, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's still in production. However, there is a famous company called Menon Company. Menon was known for the production of men's fragrances, whether it was cologne and or uh, deodorant. And so Mar one of the fond memories that I have about Morristown was part of Men and Company, they also had an arena, an ice skating arena. And during my teenage years, I would go ice skating every Friday. And yes, there are some people, Black people or those of African <laughs> descent that actually do ice skate. At least I'm one of them. So um, um, what would people outside of um, your town um say i mean how would they describe your town would you think like, wh what do you think they would say about your town if you could ask them i would say i think they would know it from a couple things i think in terms of landmarks they would know it as it relates to men in arena men and company washington monument also the green because in the center of Marstown we had the green and if, for those that are like well what's the green what does that mean well Imagine if you were going through the center of Marstown uh, and you were, say, going around a cul-de-sac. Well, in the in the center of town, there was just a plot of land with a monument in there in the park. And so the green was, I would say, basically a lot of people knew that. And around the green, you had churches, you had um, a synagogue, you had a famous department store, Bamberger's, which is no longer in uh, produced where my grandmother worked. You also had a, another famous store where I first, as a child, bought my first suit, Roots. So, and those are particular landmarks. I think also people would describe Marstown as quaint, uh, diverse, mm. uh, and cold during the winter. Amazing. Okay, so could you tell me, um, last question for, for your hometown wh where you grew up. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of living in your hometown? So I can give you a, a few examples. Like in London, where I live, um, one of the disadvantages is that the rent is really high. Hmm. Okay, great. Advantages. My family was there. It was diverse. <laughs> yeah. There were two parks that I went to as a kid, Burnham Park and uh, Lewis Morris Park, Burnham Park, I fed the, the, the ducks, particularly in the summer and the fall. And um, in Lewis Morris Park, I used to swim because there was a lake in the middle of the park mm -hmm. and also go to the Micah Mart. So family, park. Um, also, I think that, the, I think another advantage was, is that Morristown was a, uh, you know, it was generational in terms of family. So a lot of families knew each other, particularly where I grew up in a section of Morristown, Collinsville. So that was an advantage because, you know, me growing up as a child, it was kind of like, okay, yes, I had one biological mother. <laughs> Yet my neighbor, ooh, she was my mother. My grandmother was one mother. My aunt was one mother. So I think that was an, another advantage. And then also, too, I think is, I think um, diversity. I mean, in ways, we had different racial and ethnic groups. I mean, they might have been, quote unquote, or people would say, OK, well, there were they might have been segregated. But I think that sometimes people feel more comfortable living with each other, whoever they identify. But also we had a mixed area of that. So I think those were uh, advantages in terms of disadvantages. It's interesting thinking about it now because uh, you mentioned the aspect about rent. Um, I don't. You know, in comparison to London, I don't think they were. I, to be honest with you, Helena, I, I don't, I don't, I can't really think of any disadvantages. Oh, maybe with the exception of, um, yes, disadvantage sometimes, particularly during the summer, because people would want to go to the beach, uh, and or people would come into the into Marstown because we had different festivities and festivals. Was traffic sometimes that was a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Nice. Amazing. I think we've got like a, a, a an idea of what it's like there. Um, now, would you be able to compare it to where you live now? Um, Jetta, Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Like it's night hometown. and day. It's completely night and day. Uh, how is it night and day? Jeddah is a bigger city okay. than um, Jetta is a bigger city than Marstown. Um, it's a it's a completely different culture than Marstown. 
um, it's a completely different country. So there are more differences than I think there are similarities. What would the, what would the similarities be? Well, um, there's an, I think similarities that come to my mind would be aspect of family. You have that certainly in Jeddah. You definitely have that in Marstown. What's another similarity? Um, the traffic. People, <laughs> tra yeah, well, no, there's actually more traffic in Jeddah than there is in Marstown. Totally. Um, I mean, no, it's, that's just that, you know, to, to me, comparing Marstown to Jeddah is like comparing Marstown to Nat Natchitoches. It's just mm -hmm. completely different. Plus, I was a child. So when I was in yeah. Marstown, I was a child and now I'm an adult. So, so I mean, what, so your area in um, Saudi right, right now, what, um, what is it known for? Is there anything there that's like famous or? Oh, yeah, Jeddah is known for a lot of famous things, in my opinion. So if there are any Saudis listening to this phone or the Jeddahis <laughs> listening to the phone, if I miss something, please forgive me. But <laughs> teacher Halima asked me, when I think of Jeddah, what is Jeddah famous for? Jeddah to me is famous for the Cornish. Jeddah to me is famous for having a bicycle right in like at a roundabout. Jeddah is famous for having a museum. Jeddah is famous for snorkeling, for Ubhar, for you know, the Red Sea, Jeddah is, Jeddah, excuse me, Jeddah is famous for the traditional food, different types of taps or amendi, amendi. Uh <laughs> Jeddah is famous for al -Baik. For Oh yeah, I heard that. What, They're gonna, for, yeah, going to that, um, the UAE now. They've got a franchise yes, now yes. going there. <laughs> yes, I mean, Jeddah, like Jeddah, al -Baik, al -Baik. And for those people that don't know what al -Baik is, it's kind of like, if you're an American, you've ever heard of like KFC or Kentucky Fried Chicken, it's 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 equivalent to that. Um, and then certainly Jeddah is 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 uh, famous for its proximity in terms of uh, you know Mecca Medina. So I love Jeddah. When I first came to Saudi Arabia, uh, I had the opportunity of living uh, my first international assignment when I migrated and transitioned from business into teaching was obviously in Saudi Arabia, and I had the choice between Riyadh and Jeddah. And one of the reasons why I chose Jeddah, really two, number one, it was close to the water and growing up as a kid in Morristown, and then also subsequently in, in Chicago before I moved to Saudi Arabia, I was used to the water. I like water. So um, yeah, I was like, Jeddah, there it is. It's, yeah. They got the Red Sea. Make I could go swimming yeah um and go to the beach i think so it was there is much more uh, cosmopolitan than riyadh too isn't it well i you know i would add, i would add, i would think that you should consult your saudi audience in there <laughs> some people would make the argument that riyadh is more cosmopolitan and you know they have better restaurants or it's certainly the capital so they have more disposable income mm. and you know they're in my opinion Riyadh streets are better than Jeddah. But what I would say personally about Jeddah for me is that I really liked, I, I liked the aspect of diversity in, in Jeddah in comparison to other cities. But again, I recognize this is not my country. I'm an immigrant, so, but I love Jeddah. If I had the choice of living between Jeddah and Riyadh, I'm sorry if there are any Riyadhis listening to the <laughs> phone. I've been to the capital, but I, Jeddah, I love Jeddah. It's like my second home. Yeah. Wow, like I, it, it, I mean, I, I didn't really expect it to go this way, but it was really interesting to see you compare between your hometown where you grew up to Jeddah, and I like how you described it as like night and day. Um, so th there's a lot of aspects where like family, where it involves family, which is very similar. Like, um, when we spoke, um, in another um, you know, meeting that we had, you talked about how family is so important how like it takes a village to raise a kid and you you have a lot of community where you're yes from. thinking about it in retrospect as i think as i get older i appreciate i appreciate my hometown i appreciate morristown a lot more why because it was family i mean i grew up in a very family oriented aspect and obviously that's a different generation probably older than most people on the call but in the sense of it takes a community you know it takes a village to raise a child it was that and so in Morristown, it was family, and you know my biological family, my extended family, my neighbors were my family, um, and so you know that's carried with me, which 
I think is really, really important, at least for me. So growing up as a kid, I used to hate it. It was like, oh, if I did something wrong, Mrs. McCann, my neighbor, who's my <laughs> mother, would tell my mother. Or if I did, you know, <laughs> if I wanted to just be a normal kid, my cousin would say, uh, but looking at it now, no, it's, it, it's, it, it was about family. And so I appreciate that. And that is, I think, a similarity with respect to each other, you know, in terms of community and family and stuff that. I have seen lineages and, you know, I guess it's still there because I've kind of, quote unquote, been adopted by this woman that, that you know, mama, who I call mama, who is mm -hmm. Saudi. And then every Friday after, you know, she has me over after she goes to, you know, for prayer, she has me over for dinner and she adopted me. She calls me her black American son. So mm -hmm. um, I guess the vestiges of family are important. But no, I think, you know, that's how I, I, I family is important. And I, and it's interesting because I think that, you know, how that is carried over in terms of my style of teaching is very interesting. I'm known as that best teacher will, but I, I say the ATW family, I don't call them followers. I don't call them learners. I call them family. I hope, th I hope the followers recognize that. I don't know. You'd have to ask, you know, the ATW yeah. family followers or whatever, but I don't like that word. So I call them family. I love that. Okay, so we're going to stop there in terms of this topic, but I'm excited to go to the next section, which I'm just going to give you a few um, either questions or um, things like that I want to know um, about whatever. First like, thing comes, that comes from yeah, my mind. Yeah, first thing that comes to your head, yeah, your mind. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, here I'm we go. I'm scared, I'm scared. <laughs> Okay, so first word, for, first um, question, what is your favorite English word? First word that came to my mind is passion. Oh, I love that. Because without passion, in my own personal passion, without passion, there is no life for me. And passion has implication both in my personal life and professional life. If people are listening to this, you know, this podcast and they want to learn English or they want to aspire to the goals, passion, the desire, the eagerness, the passion, definitely. Amazing. Okay, so are you currently learning any other languages? I'll answer that question to be determined. And if I was learning any particular future language, I would not tell people until I was at a particular level of fluency. But oh. I do know how to speak another language other than English. Which Sometimes is? it's good. Uh, I, uh, would you like me to speak a little now or just say the language? <laughs> well, I won't know what you're saying, but it depends. Oh, that's uh... true. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, well, maybe you will know. Je Bonjour, je m'appelle Guillaume, j'ai fait le français pour huit ans. I oh, speak very nice. French is I so amazing. <laughs> it's so, I feel like the, the language is so elegant compared to English. Uh, but I, I, I understand uh, basics. So you said, um, hi, my name is... Uh... Yeah, I said my name is William <laughs> and, I've, and, I, and I've studied French for eight, eight years, actually eight plus years. Oh, and then wow. I'm actually in the process of studying another language, but I, I would leave that. Sometimes it's good not Secret. to let someone know. Okay. It's, yeah, well, sometimes it's good not to know so that when people say things about you, then <laughs> that's the really best. Dumb stuff. <laughs> what do you What do you think of when you when you hear fearless English? Teacher Halima. Oh my God, no! Forget Teacher Halima. Well, you asked me the question. It was the first thing that came from my mind. You asked me the question, fearless English. Well, I believe that I follow teacher Halima from Blackboard English, and she has a thing that says fearless learner. So the first but thing what, that came what to do my you, mind. What do you think the message means? Fearless, without, without, without trepidation, going for it, not worrying about what people think. And fearless to me is, is just recognizing that for me, Fear is real, but it doesn't necessarily mean that a person cannot overcome it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, last thing. One message to share with the students before you go. A message. I have, okay, please indul uh, indulge me one second. I have two quick messages. Number one, it, though, my, uh, though it might seem impossible, through persistence and belief in oneself, all things are possible to those who believe. That's the first one. All things are possible to those that believe, and that's not original. That's a quote from Nelson Mandela. The second one, what I would say is, is that um, that I really, hopefully, people that decide to be part of the ATW family understand is that we learn together. And so I think that 
those particular quotes, I think, in my own life, both personally and professionally, have, have aided me. And hopefully, I think that as it relates to English and their goals, I think they're very applicable. Thank you so much, Will. That was amazing. Thank you so much for coming today. I really enjoyed this conversation. And hopefully we have you here again um, talking to us um, about other English-related things. So again, Teacher Holy Melissa, I want to say thank you very much again for having me. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm humbled by that. Uh, more importantly, two quick things. Number one is, is that I hope for those individuals that are listening to the podcast, you know, take this information and ask them, I hope they ask them themselves the question, what can they learn from it? Hopefully something. And I just wanted to also say to you, continue blessings and continue support for the great job that you're doing. You're really changing lives, regardless of the fact if you know it. But if you don't know it, I'm just here to let you know that you are. But I'm sure your fearless learners also let you know that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Will. Right. Um, I hope you enjoyed the conversation between teacher Will and I. Um, and now I'm going to help you take action. So today we're going to do something a little bit different to the previous lesson, um, which was on travel. Today we're going to focus on vocabulary late related to hometown. So I have a list of words that teacher Will mentioned, teacher Will and I mentioned in the conversation. And today I want you to focus on using the dictionary to help you um, understand the words. But before you do that, first you're going to check your spelling. That's number one. And that's the beauty of the podcast. You know, you can check your um, spelling and I'll read out some words. And all you have to do is write the words down. Then you're going to try and guess the meaning of these words from context. So listen to the podcast again and try to think about the meaning of these words. Then I want you to check the dictionary and to see if you understood the meaning from context. This takes practice. So don't think that, you know, the first time round you'll get it right. But it's actually a really good um, practice because it helps you um, understand words from context. So the teacher doesn't have to explain the words every single time. So that's your homework. First, I'm going to read out the words, write it down, write down um, and try to guess the meaning of the words, then check the dictionary and make sure that you notice what are the words that are around these words. Write down the example sentences that are given to you um, in um, the dictionary of your choice that you've chosen to check the meaning. Okay, so word number one, migrated, migrated, suburb, suburb, population, population, diverse city, diverse city, landmarks, landmarks, Monument, monument, generational, generational, night and day, night and day. What is it known for? What is it known for? Cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan, disposable income, disposable income, immigrant, immigrant. So those are the list of words. I'm going to put them in the show notes so that you can check um, just in case you didn't hear it. But remember that it's important for you to go back. If you can't hear the words, listen to the podcast again. Try to listen to the word as many times as possible before you, moved, before you move forward and then check the answers in um, the description. I'm not going to be providing the meaning because I want you to check the meaning in the dictionary and then notice what are the words around the um, these, um, these vocabulary words that I've taught you. And one more thing, if you want extra homework, 
take, you know, choose one word and teach it to someone else. This will really help you remember it. Pick a word that's extra difficult for you and teach someone else the word. All right, my friend, um, have a wonderful week and I'll see you next week with another podcast. Bye. If you enjoyed today's lesson, then you'll love our speaking club where we take what we learn in these lessons and put it into action. You'll get to meet other women and practice speaking English every week for an hour. All you have to do is go to www.blackboardenglish.com forward slash cup. I'll say that again, www.blackboardenglish.com forward slash cup. Let's work together to help you become a confident English speaker. See you in class.